So this part, um, which is non-duality made simple, I'm going to explain that which cannot be explained by just having fun with it. So the creation made simple. Again, starting off with the I am spirit abiding in God, God is spirit abiding in me. And that which is, is really all that is. And so if we look at it and we just imagine this perfect light ever extending, and we call that God or Om, another word of saying God is the Om, just a vibrational frequency, no word, just the Om. That's all there is, source energy, pure awareness, light. Light is love, love is what is. Peace, eternity. It is that which is another word for saying it in the course is God's mind, that which is. The Tao. We call it the beloved spirit, mind, the eternal now, what is. That is all that is. And there's an appearance of something happening. But it all is contained in what is. And what happened what appears to happen is that little black dot that appeared on the screen, on the screen of the eternity, is an essence aspect of what is. So we call that sun. Sun is asleep, dreaming. It dreams of nothing. It has a tiny mad idea. And therefore, it's dreaming. And dreaming is wrong mind. It is ego. Dreaming is the activity of the dream is ego. It's activity identification. It's identity. It's identified with the activities as people, places, things, and events. It's an illusion, projection of the universe, the Big Bang. And it then formulates a concept about itself. It fractures itself into thoughts about itself, thoughts that take form, thought forms, in a dreaming, a sleep mind, spirit dreaming. And at some stage, it realizes it doesn't, cannot realize what it is. So it slows the dream down. It slows the vibration down. It turns light frequency, thought frequency into form. And so a part of it remains as thought forms, formless thought. We call that, we've given it a word, a story, spirit world. And part of it projects into its activity of its dreaming mind. So it's dreamt up the universe and it's dreamt up our little sun and our solar system and our planet. And it projects part of itself. These thought forms project itself into sentient beings, human beings, 8 billion sentient beings, 8 billion thought forms projected into thought in form, body, mind. And it appears as this physicality and appears and disappears. We call that the reincarnation process, birth and death the appearance and disappearance of thoughts that take form. And the minute it goes into the physicality, it veils the forgetfulness of its formless thoughts. And it mystifies it. It calls that the spirit world or possibly heaven or the in-between, the thereafter, the hereafter. And yet it's all happening in the activity of a dreaming mind. It dreams its spirit. It dreams it incarnates. It dreams it becomes spirit again and incarnates and in spirit and incarnates. It's just the dream. And while it's here, it's trying to figure out because by the activity of thought form, taking form, physical form, it now appears as you and I in that which is. All of this is happening in God. It's happening in one aspect, the dreaming son of God's mind. And that mind splits itself into two. The urges, the instinct, the anger, the forgetfulness, the frustration. And it splits that, becomes the wrong mind. And it splits itself into the gentleness, the, the quietness, the, the echo of eternity inside itself, the gentleness, the happy, the religious, the spiritual, happy, funny, charitable, kind, flexible. Amicable, empathetic, powerful, successful, hopeful, intellect, good, good people, good people pleasing. And that's the good person. 
the good part, the good angel on the one shoulder and, and the wrong minded, which is a, you know, it's the atheist, it's the scientist, scientific, needs proof. Look, it's formulation, it needs proof, it needs physical answers to everything. It's unhappy, it needs nasty, it's instinctive, it acts on instinct. It's stingy, it's unkind, it's rigid, it's evil. It can be negative, it's argumentative. It's always wants to be right instead of happy. It's the victim, it can be fearful, and it loves to be the doormat, the victim of the world. And there's this illusion that you have free will but to choose between the two. And you learn the ideas of make manifest by visualization. And what is, what is the activity visualizing? Because it's an activity. It's visualizing ideas of desire. And it realizes when it resonates in that desire energy, it attracts what it wants, but it's only attracting more illusions into itself. This is the world of projection. Thoughts projected into form, reincarnation, the physical world of body, the idea of time, space, matter, as if anything matters at all. It looks for reason, looks for purpose, it looks for meaning. It really is just replaying its dream activity over and over again in a loopy loop, mindless loop, searching for answers, searching for ideas of enlightenment, and really all it's searching for is to be happy. It's a dream of separation. It's the dream of the activities being separate, seeing themselves as unique, different, not belonging. Now, nobody belongs because deep within its essence, it says, this is not true. This is not real. And something from deep within it. So now we, that, or that previous side is what you see on the left-hand side. That's the whole thing. That's the dream of separation. But something says, I'm that which observes all of I am the sun. I'm the decision maker. I'm the observer. Choose again. And it chooses again, meaning right-mindedness. It chooses again based on the echoes of eternity, spirit, memory of itself, its true essence. And it becomes silent stillness. It becomes non-judgment, unconditional love in appearance. And when it abides in silent stillness, there's inspired action that appears. It's the awakened dreamer. The essence awakens to self. It realizes it is that which dreams. Even though it appears as a, lo as a localized activity, body-mind, it is that which dreams. You're not the dream. Body, this, this body is the dream. It's the activity of the dream. You're that which dreams it. You're that which dreams all of it. And slowly you become the knowing of your essence as that which is spirit. It becomes non-attached awareness, expects nothing, realizes it's connected to everything. It realizes that this appearance as a body is an instrument for that which is, that which is the light of awareness, the eternal light of presence now, the eternal now. There still appears to be a light echo of the old personality. The humor, the fun still flows. The creativity still wants to play. But it is the I am reawakened. The, the observer realizing it's dreaming awakened. It's the at one the atonement, the Holy Spirit. It realizes I'm spirit, I abide in God. God is spirit, abides in me. And so whenever a problem comes up, it doesn't try and understand the problem. It just moves into silent stillness where no problems exist. It doesn't try to make sense of it. It realizes there is no sense to make in that which has never existed. This is the awakening awareness returning to that thought level consciousness, the bridge consciousness, the dotted line, which says, now we hold. This is what is. What is, is this. What is, is appearing in that which is. And that is what the course is. And God takes the final step. There's the dissolving, the dissolution of that which is body-mind identity. And the essence, the spark of life returns to the awakened part of the mind, which is fully aware that it is part of that which is forever. And it returns to pure source energy, pure awareness. It returns to that which it is. It always has been the extension of what is. The Tao, the beloved, the spirit, the eternal now. It returns to that. Nothing's ever happened. We But had a silly dream that never really happened, that appeared to happen. With the, the what is as an extension of that which is. The sun had a dream that never really happened. And all that is, is God is and love is. 
and love is God, and God is what is appearing. It's the substrata behind all of this. And so what is seeing? Well, you don't see anything. You're projecting. You're not seeing anything. You are the seeing. That which appears to be seen as a myriad of people, billions of people, thousands of activities, is all that which is appearing in the light. And so now if we move on to the analogy of the screen, while you focus on the pictures, you're not aware of the screen you're looking at. You're fully attached to the, the drama, the stories, the activities, the people, the places, the travel, the far-off destinations, the teachings, the gurus, those that came before, those that come after. What's the process? What's, what's the technique? And that fills your mind and you have no time to be still and reconnect with the essence of self because you tell yourself a million little stories, eight billion stories playing out simultaneously, each one having hundreds of millions of their own little stories, stories within stories, layers within layers. And yet when you abide in stillness, the world seems to recede. And you can bring into your awareness the silent stillness, an empty mind, empty of all thoughts, focused on the breath of life. Move into the silent stillness, focus on the breathing. You realize as you breathe in and, and breathe out, it's natural. There's no process. There's no technique. You don't need to learn to breathe prana breath. It's just breath. And you realize that the air you breathe is the same air that touches the most distant planet in the universe. It's all space. Air is space being breathed in, appearance of breathing, in and out. You're breathing in the space. You are space. Quantum physics, quant quantum particle physics has shown us atoms, nuclei moving so fast, they appear real. But it's all just space. It's all just space appearing as physical. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when you abide in the silent stillness, the space goes quiet like a beautiful, serene mountain scene, water and the mountain, everything's just quiet. And now you can still your thoughts and focus on one thing. Focus on the breath. Forget the objects. Go within, silent. Every breath is you taking in what is. What is is God. Every exhale you exhale. It's, you're in it. You are it. And so the screen goes quiet. The activity goes quiet. The mind goes still. The observer goes quiet, silent stillness. And you abide. Peace is joy and stillness. And sometimes it starts to move, bubbles up. And peace is joy. And joy is peace in motion. And joy and peace are that which is. And what is, what is that which is? It's God. Love. Love is God. God is love. Peace and joy is love. And so the mind goes quiet, the activities, the stories, the past, the, the future, future fears, past gripes dissolve, and the mind goes still. And all of a sudden, even the picture of the beautiful serene dissolves, and you put up the blue screen. Abide in silent stillness, the I am, no thought, abiding in the essence. And in that I amness, you realize even the I amness is what is. That which observes is observed by that which is. The observer is what is, part of that which is. And when you abide long enough in that, long enough in the appearance of time, but not eternity, even the blue screen is a fabrication of imagination although it's closer because there's no activity in the appearance of form. It all is what is. And in that abidance, this, you become aware of the screen. You become aware of the essence in which all is contained, in which all appearances appear. You become aware of the awareness, the screen, the screen which, in all, which all seems to happen in. You become aware the screen is God. And the activities on the screen appeared real, but it's never changed the screen. No matter what you do in your life, 
You can't change the substrata of what is. It is always that which is. That which is is God, love. And you are an activity appearing in that. Because you're an activity of a dreaming mind appearing in that. And now when you're aware of being aware, aware that you are awareness itself, that little questioner wants to pop back in. And what do I do now? I do nothing. I just am. Is the appearance of this. I used to chop wood so I could sell it, and then I could buy water and feed the kids. Now I just chop wood, fetch water, feed the kids. It's just what is. Maybe I want to change it. Maybe I just want to swim in the water or walk on the water. And buy me for me, buy a few more kids, whatever. It does it now matters not. What happens is the joyous nature of this expression you once made in order to try and find your happiness is happiness. Because the screen is pure happiness. And now you resurface and reborn awareness. Now you pour the essential self, the screen through your filters of whatever you choose it to be, whatever you want it to be. You pour that essential screen nature passionately into the world through whatever makes you happy. You could be hanging out with friends. You could go into a wonderful, beautiful setting. You can go back into the world and play again. But you remain vigilant, aware of the awareness in which you reside. Everything is what is. You're not resisting anything. You're not telling the old story. Anytime you tell a story is to bring into awareness the transcendence that if you can, others can too. You become an example. You become the light for others to follow. Everything you think you see is light appearing as people, places, things, and events filtered through your imagination. And you realize it's all what is. It's all the light of what is, of that which is, the light of God shining through the filter of your tiny mad idea, separation. But now we clear those filters and we start to see the beauty because everything is an echo for the voice for God. Every voice is the voice for God. Every appearance is the voice for God, reflected the voice of God within you, back at you. And you never lose sight of the screen because you are that in which all appears because you abide in that which is everything. And so the screen is now your awareness, is your reality. And while you appear to abide here, your reality never, you don't lose it. It's all-pervading awareness. The little decoder of awareness brain, which then is attaches itself to the old identity, it just dissolves. There's no more attachment. You realize the connectedness to all of it is all of it is in you. It's all you. You're attached to nothing. No expectation that what is is what is. And it's not boring. Don't ever think it's boring because silent stillness is never boring because silent stillness is the void. It's the screen. And it's devoid of nothing. It's full of everything, which is true. <clears throat> your true reality is that which is. And it's full of you sharing your essence with that which is. The real you. And it's full. It's fulfilling. And it comes to the surface and it wants to pour. And it wants to play. Not because it needs something, because it's just expressing the joyous essence of its truest nature, the essential essence, the essence which is your essential nature, the nature of that which is, that which is. And we've called it God, but it is just that. God is not dreaming. You are dreaming in God. And all there is is the awakening to what is. Wake up is the awakening to. This which appears, appears in that which is. And this is an appearance of that which forgot it is, what it was and who it was, realizing what it is as that which is appearing in that which is. Now there's no more words. Now there's just this. And you are it. The minute you objectify and you imagine something between you and that which is. And of course, that's what world religion has done. Is it's taken someone that's figured it out. The teacher, the miracle worker. Shared his teachings. As soon as the follower came, took the teachings, wrote it down, turned it into a path, a way, a dogma. 
a religion. And it's no longer true. Now we, and then 2,000 years later, we've, we've told stories and stories upon stories, and we've made these beings that figured it out, our fractures of ourselves that figured it out, into these mystical things, unobtainable, the Son of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believed in him shall have eternal life. God sends his son down to be murdered so that we can have eternal life. That's bizarre. It really should say, for God so loved his son, he allowed him to imagine the world so that through his travels and journeys, he may realize none of it's true. And what he is, is that which is existing in God. For God so loved his son. Jesus taught, one aspect of ourself taught, I and my Father are one. I and that which is, is that which is. We're one. I am spirit and I abide in God. God is spirit and abides in me. It is that which is appearing in that which is. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's all that which is the self appearing as 8 billion people. But the essence of all of it is the self. And when you love yourself, you love your neighbor because it's the self-same self. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Seek you first the kingdom, and all else shall be given you. Seek to realize what is, is what is, and all else shall be given you. When you realize what is, is what is meant to be, then you get yourself out of striving, searching, acquiring, and you allow what is to be what is. And when you allow what is to be what is, what is meant to be what is, is what is. There's no more searching, no more seeking, no more resisting. Because what resists? That which isn't aware of what is as itself. God is not dreaming. One tiny aspect within itself dreamt the dream that could never be. The extension of itself dreamt up the universe. The extension we call the sun. It returns back and realizes I've never left. The prodigal son returns. Great teaching. And the father sends a feast because the father is not complete without the son, because the son is a part of the father, as the father is a part of the son. Oneness. God is what is. I am that I am. This and all of it. As one forever in you. God is the love with which we love God. Love is the absence of bodies. Love is the essence in which we all abide, appearing it to be something we're not. Be still and know I am. I am is that which observes until I am dissolves and there is just what is. Don't go and interpose things between you and that which is, you and God. You are in essence Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, abiding in God's Holy Spirit. Don't put something in between. Jesus is trying to teach you. You're no different to him. Don't turn him into something that prevents you from knowing yourself as that which is Christ's love in God. Non-duality means no duality. Love means no duality. God means no duality. No duality means oneness, I am. And even that fades, and there's just the eye, and even that fades, and there's just what is appearing as all of this. Be that knowing, because there's nothing to know. And to be in God is being that which is. Be in God. Being in God. I am. Fading, silent, stillness. This is what is. Watch it again. When the questions surface, it'll quiet them because what is, is. God always has been, always will be. The eternal, before and after, Alpha Omega, silent stillness, inspired action, centered, always in the capital S, self, self is spirit, capital S, self is source. Capital S, self, spirit, source, same thing. I am. Is what is. The 
the essence of Father, the essence of Son, the essence of Spirit are one. I am in Son, I am in Father, I am in Spirit, I am. Collapse, oneness, what is that which is, is silence. I trust this will clear it up. Let go, let go, let go, let go. The story, stop the story. Stop the eye thinking, stop. Abide. Inspired action, act. Act the what is from that place of being in God. Let's stop there.